so as all of you know the air pollutants can be classified into primary air pollutant and secondary air pollutant as mentioned in our literature these pollutants like primary air pollutants are the substances like hydrocarbons or sometimes also referred to as VOCs second then CO which is carbon monoxide as you can see in the literature third that is NOx which is indeterminate mixture of NO and NO2 this question has been asked many times that what is NOx so it is an indeterminate mixture of NO nitric oxide and nitrogen dioxide then we have SO2 then we have particulate matter these all are primary air pollutant then in the category of secondary air pollutant we have substances like tropospheric ozone which is also called as bad ozone then we have pan peroxyacetyl nitrate which is a eye irritant or lacrimatal compound which cause irritation to eyes then we have acetrine which is also a secondary pollutant now we will be discussing the details of criteria pollutants so there are six criteria pollutants these are CO carbon monoxide SO2 NO2 PM10 or PM2.5 lead and ozone and these are also called as criteria air pollutant now we will be discussing something about hydrocarbons or VOCs so they can be further categorized into three category one alkene having a general formula CN H2N plus 2 for example ethane which is C2H6 then alkene having a general formula CN H2N example ethene C2H4 or also called as ethylene third alkyne having a general formula of CNH2N minus 2 for example C2H2 which is called as ethylene which is called as ethylene or acetylene ethylene is also called as acetylene now we will be discussing about the details of hydrocarbons hydrocarbons are made up of hydrogen and carbon and they enter into the atmosphere when solvents fuels and other organic evaporates organic substances evaporates along with unburned hydrocarbon or partially burned hydrocarbons the natural source of hydrocarbon so the natural source include methane and terpenes for example monoterpenes which are emitted by pine tree or spruce tree isoprene which is emitted by eucalyptus and citrus and methane which is very important emitted by paddy fields anthropogenic source of these hydrocarbon include incomplete combustion of gasoline evaporation from volatile base paints so these are the important source which generally ask in examinations methane is the most abundant voc however it is subtracted from the total hydrocarbon measurement due to its inert nature the rest of the hydrocarbon measurement is called tnmoc means total non-methane organic compounds means if you will subtract the hydrocarbon measurement of methanes from the total then the rest of the things are called as total non-methane organic compounds hydrocarbons do not have direct effect on plants except that of ethene which is also called as ethylene it's also called as ethylene which is a gaseous plant hormone though urban concentration of VOCs does not have any effect in human beings but VOCs 
volatile organic compounds for example benzene toluene ethylene xylene they helps or perhaps essential in the formation of photochemical smog that's why they are harmful so if we take example of the volatile organic compounds such as benzene c6h6 which is a carcinogen all of us know formaldehyde which is also harmful so these hydrocarbons are basically affecting the human health if we talk about partial pressure partial pressure is nothing but is the pressure of a component out of a mixture of gas divided by total pressure of that mixture into 100 first we will be talking about these criteria pollutant one by one so in this series first we will be taking care of carbon monoxide which is a poisonous colorless gas so carbon monoxide is colorless odorless tasteless gas as poisonous gas and this is the single largest pollutant in urban areas 80 percent of which is contributed by motor vehicle means 80 percent of the which is contributed by motor vehicles natural source if we talk about the natural source of carbon monoxide is paddy fields where methane is getting oxidized to co reversibly for co natural source emissions is much more than the anthropogenic source means the naturally emitted carbon monoxide is more as compared to the anthropogenic source and other important information about co is that co has 200 times more affinity towards hemoglobin which is oxygen carrying protein in the blood as compared to oxygen so it can combine with hemoglobin even at low partial pressure and it's having high affinity towards hemoglobin carbon monoxide why it is dangerous it is dangerous because it forms COHP which is called as carboxyhemoglobin and which may cause dizziness or headache in human beings because it inactivates the hemoglobin which lose the capacity to transport the oxygen inside the body of human being and hence it feel dizziness or headache the health effect due to carbon monoxide poisoning are generally observed even at low concentration such as one to seven percent of carboxyhemoglobin COHP however above 60 percent above 60 percent may cause death if exposure continues for a longer time carboxyhemoglobin COHB is removed from bloodstream when clean air is breathed in by the person so in normal human being it can clear about half of the CO in three to four hour it means that if we identified earlier that someone has a CO poisoning then it can be a remedial action and the life can be saved now there are some disease which are associated with particulate matter for example we have vishnosis which is also called as brown lung disease and it is caused by cotton fiber so vishnosis or brown lung disease is caused by cotton fiber similarly pneumoconiosis which is also called as black lung disease is caused by coal dust then we have silicosis which is caused by silica and then we have asbestosis which is caused by asbestos fiber these are some of the occupational hazard or disease which is caused by the substance written in front of them now we will be talking something about so2 which is sulfur dioxide so if we talk about so2 all the fossil fuel contain some sulfur while coal has the most amount of sulfur as compared to other fossil fuels or we must say that the coal has the greatest amount of sulfur and the generally it ranges between one to six percent means coal having a one to six percent content of sulfur right and this all information is brought by ASS Science Foundation Delhi for the environmental science community so this one to six percent sulfur can be divided into two parts half of the sulfur is bound organically 
so this half of the sulfur is bound organically and half of the sulfur is physically trapped on the surface of coal and this half of the sulfur which is physically trapped on the surface of coal can easily be removed by a washing means we can wash this coal and then it can be easily removed then in second point we can see in petroleum the content of sulfur it is less and the concentration lies up to a range of 1 ppm or 1 mg per liter then natural gas at the well head means the well from where the natural gas is obtained at their mouth or head contain considerable amount of sulfur in the form of toxic gas H2S this question have been asked in UGC one time that a known metal having a rotten egg smell poisonous gas which is emitted at the well head there is H2S that has to be removed before use so remember this thing H2S is the compound which is poisonous then source of SO2 if we talk about sources of SO2 so we can categorize these sources into three category first one is combustion the sources which is contributed by combustion of coal and other fossil fuel the second one is the vehicular traffic and the third one is known combustion sources so we will be dealing them one by one if we talk about the first source which is combustion of coal and other fossil fuels 85 percent of so2 produced by the stationary source right then second one if we talk about which is vehicular traffic which is a non-stationary source and five percent contribution is there now we will be coming on non-combustion sources which is like petroleum refinery ore chief ore cement production copper smelting so here one question they ask that is cu2s which is a ore of copper belongs to chalcosin family that's why they called is this ore as chalcopyrite and the bacteria for the recovery of this core is thiobacillus ferredoxin so these two questions they have asked the bacteria associated is thiobacillus ferredoxin and these are chalcopyrite or group 16 member because chalcogens which means ore forming elements so group 16 members are important there okay so now we will be talking about the effects of SO2 what all effect SO2 cause so we will be looking at them we will be talking about the effect of SO2 first one is it is highly corrosive and thus cause first weight and strength loss of materials second leaf injury or discoloration to the plant leaves third it also causes SO2 produces the synergistic effect with aerosols which is more detrimental which is more detrimental for the human health for example this SO2 when mixed up with particulate matter so this form London smog or classical smog which is a mixture of SO2 plus particulate matter right now we will be talking about health effects of SO2 so as you can see it is highly water soluble so most likely absorb in moist passage of upper respiratory tract which is trachea and bronchi where it does long term damage then addition of SO2 into aerosol produces London smog or classical smog 